Hey ho, this is Baco Draco 354 here with another Minecraft Redstone Academy video. In this video, we're going to be I'm going to be teaching you guys about this thing. The comparator. One of the most complex and difficult to understand redstone devices in Minecraft. And it has three functions. It has and two of those three, two of those functions are different settings or different modes that it has, and then the other function is just another ability that it just so happened to have. So here's the comparator in action. It's the little like shoot machine that I created. Um, basically. Um, so basically, this comparator detects under the item in this hopper, um, dropper, sorry, um, it activates this repeater which will send two signals out. One signal that goes back into the comparator, and then one signal that, that's happening, and then one signal that goes into the dropper to activate it. So it creates this sort of rotational circuit. So let's get down to the very basics of a comparator. So currently, when this light at the top is not on, then the comparator is in compare mode. And when the comparator is in compare mode, it this its secondary input will be disabled, and only its primary input will have any effect on the comparator. So let's just have a look at this. I was going to flick this lever, and when I flick it, it sends a one block signal into it and then and then a 15 block signal comes out of it so basically what a comparator does it will take a signal and sort of continue it through itself so for example when I have a two block signal going into it only a 14 signal in output will be active when I send a three block signal in only a 13 block signal will be the as the output and so on until you get to 15 block input and then a 1 block input is emitted. So the second function of a comparator is subtract mode which is when this little button at the end is lit up. In this mode the comparator subtracts the secondary input from the primary input. As you can see two, no, no, the primary input from the secondary input no, yeah. The the secondary input take away the primary input subtract the secondary input. Yes. So for example, um a one block signal going into a computer is fifteen blocks long, but then and then a two block signal going into a computer I'll have to show you on the primary input. Um a two block signal going into a computer would only have a fourteen block output. So it's fifteen take away fourteen. 15 take away 14, 1. Fifth, maybe 14 take away, 14 take away 1, 13. And that is the basic, fun that is the basic function of the, com the two basic functions of the compiler. Now up here are some, is some demonstrations of the comparator's other function. So um, I have a special piece of paper here that has some information on it. So a comparator can detect whether or not a block or any item is in a container block and depending on the amount of items in it, it will the comparator will send out a certain signal. So there's a formula for working out um, this, um, how, how, how many blocks you would need in a, oh. there's a formula for working out how many blocks you would need in a container block to send out certain signals and each, each um, formula is slightly different depending on what container it is. So the only containers that the hopper can detect are hoppers, droppers, dispensers, uh, chest, trap chest, furnaces, brewing stands, minecart, but chest, minecart with hoppers and jukebox. Now a jukebox will only ever have um, 12, a 12 block long 
output because there are only 12 meter discs. And the way you work this out is music disc 13 would only be one because it's the first in the list of music discs. Music disc cat would only have a two signal, uh, two block signal strength because it's second in the list of music discs, and so on. So the formula for working out a container, <laughs> pardon me, uh, the the formula for working out a container, or some, whatever you want to call it, um, is quite simple. But you might need a calculator to work it out because it it's slightly simple. It's simple on what you have to do, but to get the answer, you might need a calculator to be completely accurate. Ooh, I just knocked my camera then. No. There. So first of all, you're gonna have to work out the inventory space of the of the um, container. So, um, for Hopper, the inventory space, wait, hang on, sorry, no, the, to work it out, you times the amount of slots in it by 64, so this would be 5 times 64, this would be 9 times 64, and so on. And the answer to that will give you how much, the answer, that will give you how many blocks that can be stored in that container block at any one time. So, just to um, just to let you know, um, for hoppers and minecart hoppers, um, the storage space would be 320 blocks. For dispensers and droppers, the storage space would be 576. For chests, trap chests, and minecart chests. The storage space would be 1,728 blocks, and for a furnace, the storage space would only be 192 blocks because a comparator cannot detect a block that is in this slot right here. Wait, that's not right. How did I come with that? No, a furnace is is just 128 blocks. Sorry, I must have wrote it wrong. Wrote, wrote it wrong. Yeah. Uh, so. Once you've worked out the inventory space of your container, you need to divide the amount of items that you're going to put in. So, for example, as in this little example down here, which I'm going to put in 64, and then I need to divide it by the inventory space, which is 320. So, the so for a hopper, if I wanted to put a stack of blocks in, it, I would have to do 64 divided by 320, and that will give me 0 0.2. So then, I, the answer to that calculation is now called x, okay? So x, which we know is 0 0.2, times 14 gives us 2.8. And then 2.8 plus 1 is 3.8. And because we don't get 3.8 of a signal in Minecraft, we always round a decimal down, because that would never round up to get 4. So this will have a 3 block signal strength. So that means it'll only light up three of these redstone lamps. Let's see if that's right. Yeah. And that means if it if there were two stacks in it, then the then it would be six. And see, if there were three stacks it would be nine. And if there were four stacks it would be twelve. Yes. And then that would just fill um put it all the way up to fifteen. So now for a dropper. Um, and for dispensers and droppers and every other container, it's exactly the same. The only thing that is different is the inventory space. Now, brewing stands are... Let me try that again. Brewing stands are a bit more complicated. And I'm going to have to do a separate video on brewing stands because they're that much complicated. Uh, so, a bottle or a, a portion in a brimming stand on its own is four block signal strengths. And then when you like add all the X all the um other things in it, it can be quite random, sort of. So for example if I put a stack of magma cream in here it's going up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight block signal. So yeah, it it is quite confusing a brimming stand. But um, that's going to be the end of this tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful. Uh, in the next Redstone Academy tutorial, 
we will be looking at the seven basic logic gates. And I'll just run through what they are now. So they are the AND gate, the OR gate, the X, no, the NOT gate, the XOR gate, the X NOR gate, the NAND gate, the and the NOR gate. Uh, I just want to show off this. It's a box walker. Lol. Lol. <laughs> so, once again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.